Thank you for staying with us for the WSL post show. A quick one today because uh, <laughs> obviously we only got through three heats. That, that swell was showing promising signs when we rocked up here this morning, but unfortunately just started to fade away. We had a few heat restarts and eventually uh, the call was made to call it off after the third heat of the day. Here on the uh, the panel, Ronnie Blakey with Richie Lovett, Felicity Palmatier. Rich, uh, a tricky one. And you just don't want to see people out there no. fighting for their careers with limited opportunities. Nah, not, not at this level, mate. Uh, just not enough uh, waves come through. We're basically on the back end of that swell that has delivered so much over the last couple of days. But it, it, it came pretty apparent in that final heat that uh, it was time to call it off and let's go do something else. It sure did. <laughs> but the, the matchups in this round of 16, Felicity, uh, you know, mouthwatering, unbelievable. Uh, obviously, competitors at the top end of the rankings at the moment. And they're up against those who are, are fighting for their place on this tour. Yeah, we, we did see some really big heats get underway this morning. Oh, three of them. But, you know, India Robinson comes to mind as, you know, she had her back up against the wall and uh, a lot of pressure on her this morning made it happen. But I think we definitely made the right call to call it off. Those, with those few heat restarts, things were getting tricky. The tide was filling in. There's more water on the reef with that dissipating swell. So right decision to call the contest off. Let's get into that first heat because it is our Boost Mobile heat of the day. India Robinson up against it, up against Joanne Defay, the current world number two. First event this season now that Joanne hasn't made the final series, Rich. Yeah, I, I'm sure, you know, India was pretty, you know, stressed out going into this heat because Joanne is in such scintillating form. Just have a look. I mean, she's surfing so well, crazy reliable on her front hand, on her forehand, excuse me, just great turns. But uh, India Robinson, she found a couple of gems and didn't she just lean into her power game? Just amazing control on the rail, just displacing so much water, fans of spray heading skyward and uh, it was pretty unanimous. Just held her nerve, that's what she said in a post heat interview. Felicity it was all about holding the nerve and she did it so well. Oh, I thought she looked brilliant too, a lot more rounded in her surfing in this heat. Yeah, definitely a different approach to Joanne. Joanne obviously going more to the lip and uh, India really relying on that power. But I mean, she waited a long time for that first wave. And I mean, Joanne getting the first one as well out of that exchange, I was a bit worried for India, but she pulled through and had a lot of pressure and she lives to fight another day. Yeah, have a look at the numbers, impressive. And yeah, early on in the event, putting good combos together, but a bit more committed to her turn. So it feels like she's warming to this challenge of fighting for her place on the championship tour. And she's already on the climb and uh, avoiding those early round losses. She's gonna give herself a good fighting chance here. But here's uh, some movement that we've seen on the epic rankings today. And you could see there that India Robinson starting to climb. She was in 16th position, up in the 14th now. We have sadly seen some surfers relegated to the Challenger Series, Rich. Yeah, unfortunately, we saw uh, Luana Silva get bumped out uh, because Gabriella Bryan had a, had a crazy heat and she moved up into the inside the 10. Uh, obviously, Sawyer Limblad, India Robinson and Sally Fitzgibbon still have the ability to march through. Outside chance for Sophie McCulloch, but geez, it's interesting, isn't it? There's not many tickets to give out on this train left. Uh, they're all fighting for it. Yeah, Alyssa Spencer just falling out of the mix in that last heat, and she fell to one of the top five surfers in the world at the moment, who's with Stace. Thanks, Ron. Molly, bit of mental gymnastics in that one? Yeah, a lot, actually. I had a lot of time to think, so um, 60 minutes <laughs> to have a good think. No, um, obviously it was so slow in, at the start there, and. Um, at, at towards when we actually started catching waves, it was a bit comical, to be fair. <laughs> you made the decision to move the inside and uh, basically get the job done. You made the amazing call at the end there to go the first wave of that set, bigger one behind, capping the outside. Yeah, I, I mean, for sure. I guess at the start of that heat too, we obviously moved to the inside and um, tried to capitalise on those first few waves. And um, yeah, it's a hard one because you want to block, but then at the same time, it's quite slow, so you need to score as well. And um, yeah, at the end there, I was not trusting the ocean. I mean, we sat for 45 minutes, so I thought maybe there was just one wave in this set. So, um, and two, you got to read what's in front of you. It was a good wave, so I knew I could get some sort of a score. Taking some confidence out of riding that wave? Yeah, definitely. I obviously, um, I feel like I normally surf my way in the heats and then towards the end, it's always nice when you can keep composed and then turn the heat at the end. It's, I don't know, it's probably my weakness, but um, I'm happy to have one good stride on, in that little bank over there. Absolutely, you're only as good as your last heat, and that was great. Well done, Molly Picklum. Thanks, Ron.
Thank you, Stace. Yeah, Molly Picklam, important event for her. Big opportunity to make some grand, ground back on Joanne Defay and Caitlin Simmers, sort of setting the pace for those surfers in that, that final five pitcher at the moment in progressing through to the quarters now. She was in such rare form at the start of the year, getting the second and then the win at sunset, and then dropped off, had that string of nights. So uh, I feel like she's starting to, to pull it back. And that last heat there, she just showed so much sort of maturity in the way she competed and approached those uh, sort of nervous moments, really, where she had to produce a score on that final wave. So uh, look out. She's still coming. Yeah, uh, having a look at, at the forecast just before the, the <laughs> post show kicked off, Felicity, you were... <laughs> Same that's in you. your head. As a local... Guessing what was going to happen yeah, over the next mark. couple of days. <laughs> There's a few question marks there for me and a few questionable words that came out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we're going to have a look at the Surfline forecast uh, a little later on. But rising tides always <laughs> such a, a big part of the championship tour event schedule. And Margaret River's been no different. So this is Luna. Hi. Luna just caught one of the biggest waves of the day. How old are you, Luna? Um, I'm 10 years old. 10 years old and absolutely charging. Hi, girls. Welcome. This is probably the second Rising Tides for a lot of you. I'm the owner of Queen and Me. This business I started for the next generation like yourselves, and it's to inspire, empower, and educate you along your journey to achieve everything you can. There's going to be some of your favourite surfers out there and I want to encourage you guys to chat with them, ask them questions. What's your name? Amali. Nice to meet you, Amali. I'm Tyler. The cards you see behind you, they're called values cards. Your goal is your end goal, right? Some of you might have goals to do with surfing, another sport. Values are the steps you take to get to that end goal. Did you have fun? Yeah. Yeah? Did you get the best wave of your life? Yeah. Yeah? Did you almost get a barrel? Almost, yep. <laughs> it's definitely been a dream of mine to get onto the tour. I think it would just be super cool going around surfing all these waves. Got to love it. Got to love the, the buzz the, that Rising Tides gives every local community. And it kind of it runs through. You see the kids that get to experience the lineup with the world's best surfers, but their parents carry that same kind of energy. It's super inspiring. I just think back to when I was a grommet and I had interactions with the sort of local heroes at my beach, Barton Lynch and, and Rob Bain, and those moments made me want to become a pro surfer. And, and this is just such crazy experiences for these youngsters and, and I'm sure a lot of these will come on to be pro surfers as well. Don't you find to Felicity when a competitor throws themselves into the, the rising tides movement and starts to get a little bit of that energy back from the local community, it spurs them on to, to great results and India Robinson kind of led that rising tides activation and here she is keeping her dream alive. Yeah, I think a lot of the women on tour would relate to what I'm about to say is that when, you know, they were growing up, there wasn't as many women as what there is in the water or young girls. And uh, it's, it's inspiring for me to watch that Rising Tides piece and just see how many young, stoked girls there are these days to get out there and surf main break, which is a really intimidating wave and, and get to surf that with their idols. Because, you know, you, you go turn back the clock another 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that just wasn't the case. So it's a really cool initiative and I love to see it at every event. Most definitely. Let's uh, let's talk about that Surfline forecast now, Rich. We've been looking at it very closely. <laughs> we, we've got ourselves into a pretty good position by just breaking the back of this event, getting through those earlier rounds. Yep. But today, uh, you know, it's a real shame that we couldn't keep rolling through heats because it's going to make things tricky moving forward. It is. The, the next couple of days are definitely going to be uh, tricky for, uh, for the commissioner's office and everyone down here involved officials to decide what we're going to do. Flick, you may have to help me out here. So obviously we've seen this swell <laughs> deteriorate over the next couple of days. The next few days there's sort of little peaks and troughs in the swell. The swell period goes up and down a little bit. There's some wind involved as well coming from a different direction than we've had over the last sort of four or five days. You can see here Thursday through Saturday there is there is waves on the horizon. Saturday, Sunday, or Sunday in particular, looks magic. Big surf coming. Uh, but up until then, uh, it's a big old question mark around it. It's a pickle, and I'm glad I'm not the one who's making these calls. <laughs> but it, it honestly is. We're going to see that period pick up a little bit. The swell height drops off. We're going to see some ugly northerlies come into effect yeah. a little bit, which isn't the best out here. I think we're probably going to be coming down for a few old early morning calls just to see what might uh, 
the ocean might bring. But yeah, the weekend's looking promising. But I'd say right now it's um, yeah, it's a bit hard. Rick's a winery tour to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's I will say that, <laughs> that this this venue has a, a habit of surprising you yeah. uh, on those days where you don't think there's much happening. It's such a swell magnet. I yep. think we had more energy in the lineup than we anticipated yesterday, even this morning. Uh, it was still hanging around a little bit. So, you know, we'll be making the, the call each day and, and we'll see what happens. But uh, you can trust <laughs> that we're going to get the, the competitors out there in the best conditions we totally. have for yeah. the, the remainder of the window. Well, it was a short day. So as a result, the Bio Gland Daily Dose is going to be a short one. Our top three moments from an exciting morning of competition, big matchups and a lot on the line for the world's best yeah. surfers here in the round of 16. Starting at number three, Molly Picklam with an opportunity to potentially get the second spot with a huge finish here. Gets the job done over at Alyssa Spencer. Yeah, it was a really uh, mature uh, approach here from Molly Picklam. She was uh, under pressure but surfed incredibly well, which really leans into just how experienced and uh, just how well she's coping with her you know, position on tour. Coming in. At number two, India Robinson, so strong under pressure. Yeah, she really was. She had a big job ahead of her and a really big heat coming up against world number two, Joanne DeFay, who hasn't missed a final series yet. She's coming off the back of two finals, you know, a final at Bells, but India just not cracking under pressure, delivering with that big, beautiful hacks that we've known to love. Yeah, and then coming in at number one, it was a replay of the 2022 final with Gabriella Bryan and Isabella Nichols once again fighting to keep a place on the championship tour. And the winner was going to jump up into the top 10, the loser relegated to the Challenger Series. Oh, so much shenanigans went on this thing at the start of the heat. Both our women yeah. out of <laughs> position. And then when they finally started riding waves, it was Gabriella Bryan who mm. just leaned into that big power hack that she's just got in her uh, bag of tricks man this is becoming like her weapon of choice and it's it's destroying lives yeah gnarly <laughs> gnarly one and uh, Richard Dog Marsh I mean if he had any hair he would have been ripping it out because yeah. that was a, a stressful heat maybe he's kind of done that earlier in the season but uh, yeah it was uh, an intense morning a, a lot of slow heats a few restarts hopefully when we get competition back underway there's a whole lot of opportunity in this lineup because we've still got heats that are going to decide people's fate yep Will they stay on the CT in 2024? Will they be back on the Challenger Series and kicking things off a, a new campaign over there on the Gold Coast? We're going to have to wait and see. Yep. In the meantime, though, let's go rip in. Okay, let's do it. All okay. right, we're going to leave you with today's highlights. Stay tuned to worldsurfleague.com and you'll get all the information you need right there. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.